Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap, and just take a look at this. This is the brand new ROG Zephyrus G14, and it is a stunning looking laptop. Although, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that I have another laptop here. This is actually last year's G14. We've got the 2021 and the 2022 versions. Old and busted, new hotness. Although I should say that you can get them both in black or white. I just so happen to have one of each, but the white is definitely the better looking, right? So Asus have fixed just about every complaint I had. This is faster, it lasts longer, they refresh the design. This laptop is so much better. But actually the really exciting bit is what's going on on the inside as this has gone full team red with an AMD CPU and an AMD GPU combo. This is legitimately a huge overhaul even over last year's G14. Firstly, you can see we now have a much bigger touchpad, also bigger and more comfortable keycaps. The hinge now goes all the way back, making the old G14 feel quite restrictive actually. We get a brighter, faster and taller 16 by 10 screen. Brightness is now up to 500 nits, up from 300, and I measured pretty close to that, around 480, with last year's maxing out at about 315. Response times have been slashed from 25 down to just 3 milliseconds, and also now we get this taller 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so this 14 inch screen feels a little less cramped. We also get adaptive sync, Dolby Vision HDR, 100% P3 color accuracy, it's Pantone certified, and it is still a matte panel. It's a lovely screen and not just for gaming. I mean, you could use the power of this for work and productivity apps as well. And because it's color accurate, for me, even as a video editor, I would definitely consider using this. And I think side by side, these are both set to 175% scaling in Windows. Uh, they're not zoomed in at all in Chrome. And you can see just how much extra stuff we're getting on screen. I'm trying to avoid the word screen real estate, but it does make a difference. And now we've got rid of this big chunky chin at the bottom. It looks a lot better as well. And they've even managed to squeeze in a webcam. Hooray! We didn't get one last year for whatever reason, and it is still pretty basic, but it's better than nothing. And we get an IR sensor, so it supports face unlocking, and that's alongside the fingerprint reader that's built into the power button. Around the sides, there is a new micro SD card port, although a full-size SD would have been nicer. We also get two full-size Type-A USB ports, along with two Type-Cs, which I'm told at least one of will be updated to support USB 4 sometime in the near future. And on the inside, we have the latest Wi-Fi 6E and also PCIe 4 SSD storage, which is a little bit faster than before, but nothing really to write home about. And powering everything is a decent sized 76 watt hour battery with charging via DC or the Type-C ports. Oh, and also the power brick is a little bit bigger now and 240 watts up from 180. You barely feel this carrying around in a backpack. If you have the money or very rich parents, this would be a really good uh, work laptop, work laptop, gaming laptop for students as well. You could carry it around all day, especially as the battery life is better as well now, which I'll come back to in a second. It's amazing how much they can cram in such a small form factor. And also the famous anime matrix LED makes a return. This is an optional feature on certain models, but it is now 20% brighter and we get more LEDs. 1,449 to be exact. I do still think it's kind of fun with little messages or logos, but you can turn it off to save battery. Slightly more importantly though, if you boot up the ASUS Armory crate, you can use the little shortcut button here, you will see that the new G14 supports an MUX switch, a MUX switch, which is either in the default hybrid or the dedicated GPU modes. And so hybrid will actually switch to the less power hungry integrated graphics on the processor when you're doing less demanding stuff, which can make a big difference to your battery life. So if all that is not reason enough to upgrade, the big news, the headline really with the G14 is what's going on on the inside. We've got these two AMD stickers. There's not an Intel Core or an RTX in sight. We're full AMD here, and you can get this with either a Ryzen 6800HS or 6900HS. These are both 8-core, 16-thread chips, and also either a Radeon RX 6700S or 6800S graphics card. This is all new hardware for 2022, and it's also paired with up to 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM and a terabyte of SSD storage. Now, if you don't already know, can you guess how much this might be? Because it's a lot. This top spec new G14 will set you back a cool $2,500, although it does start from $1,600, which I think is actually gonna be the better option. It's a lot of money and more expensive 
than last year. Now, if we can get a little bit nerdy for a minute, most of the CPU improvements here are down to the new 6 nanometer Zen 3 Plus cores. That's down from 7 nanometers on the previous 5000 series chips. And also we're getting improved power management. For example, this can put idle cores, or even all of them, to sleep to save power. And it does this even during tiny pauses, like when you stop scrolling or between inputs. The 35 watt TDP of both chips doesn't really tell you that much as it can go up or down significantly based on what you're doing. So with these new chips, it's all about efficiency, efficiency, efficiency. I love that joke. The thing is, it's actually not that much faster versus the 5900HS in last year's G14. In Cinebench R23, we're looking at a 7% boost in single core and just 3% in multi-core. However, it's the efficiency and also having that MUX switch that means we are getting a nice bump in battery life here. For example, after an hour of YouTube, last year's G14 had 85% of its battery left versus 90 on the new one. And I've been getting around 8 hours of normal non-gaming use out of this, whereas it was closer to 6.5 last year. But gaming on battery is still pretty rubbish. It slashes your frame rate at least in half, and neither the new or the old G14 lasts a full hour. Now this older G14 can be specced with up to an NVIDIA RTX 3060, and that's what I've got in here. This is the top spec model, also with a QHD screen. I actually bought this myself just so I could compare it for this video, and hopefully that's worth a little subscribe and maybe a ding of that bell icon. But now on the new one, we have a couple of AMD options. On the cheaper models, you get the 6700S, or you have the higher spec 6800S, which I've got here. Now there are a bunch of variables, but the 6800S is roughly between the 3060 and the 3070 in terms of performance. Both AMD cards do support DXR ray tracing, so through Windows' DirectX 12, and also more importantly we get Fidelity FX Super Resolution, aka FSR, aka AMD's version of Nvidia's DLSS tech, which does work well, but it's still not as widely supported and that can be an issue. Now before we get to the gaming tests, there is one other thing to consider about this, and that is what's called the AMD Advantage. The combination of using an AMD CPU and a GPU basically gives you more than the sum of its parts. This could be a whole video by itself, but one of the big features is called Smart Shift Max, where the CPU and the GPU can actually transfer power to each other dynamically in real time based on what you're doing and whether you have a more CPU or GPU intensive task. But the fact it allows the 6800S to boost from 80 up to 105 watts in graphically intensive apps or, you know, games by taking power from the CPU when it's not needed as much, that's pretty cool. And then there's also our good friend SAM, or Smart Access Memory, which lets the CPU take advantage of the GPU's VRAM if it needs to in heavily CPU-bound tasks. It's all very clever and also very technical, but it goes on behind the scenes and essentially gives you extra performance for free. Okay, so I've kept you waiting long enough. Let's put this to the test. Is it really much of a step up? In the 3DMark Time Spy benchmark, we're looking at a 19% optic, and then in the extreme version of the same test, it's 15% faster. Not too shabby, but of course it is all about the games. And look at that, half of the ones on test are actually slower on the new G14. And the main reason for that is NVIDIA's DLSS, which in Battlefield and Fortnite make quite a big difference to your frame rate. Although surprisingly in Rainbow Six Siege, with or without DLSS, I couldn't get close to the frame rates on the new G14. And that's despite it not even supporting AMD's FSR. So I would say at this point it's worth considering what you play, uh, if you've got a favorite game and whether that supports DLSS or AMD's FSR or both, uh, and then maybe that's you know, a reason to either not upgrade or pick this one over this one. But going forward, we're only gonna see more and more developers optimize for FSR. I was going for the wrong one there. For AMD's FSR, and that will definitely even the playing field. But all things being equal, if we turn off or ignore the upscaling tech just for a moment, this is a good 15 to 18% faster than this, and puts it much closer to the RTX 3070. Both laptops still get pretty toasty though. I recorded 97 degrees on the CPU during my testing, so no difference there, but I did notice the exterior temps on the new G14 were a couple of degrees lower, but it's not really that significant. And also where you actually have your fingers on the WASD keys, it's much the same. When you're not gaming and have the G14 in Windows or silent mode, you never really hear the fans and it doesn't heat up, which is nice, and it definitely makes this usable as a work or everyday laptop as well. But under load, it does get quite hot, and especially in turbo mode, you'll want a pair of headphones to drown out that fan. So, the big question, should you buy the new G14? Well, if you have the current G14 
no, it's not worth it. Yes, there's lots of nice to have upgrades and it's a little bit faster in some games, but absolutely not. This is still a fantastic laptop. And if you can get this on a good deal or a discount, especially as this comes out, definitely still worth considering. But this, as I say, does also fix pretty much every criticism I had about this. Bigger trackpad, more comfortable keyboard, longer battery life, much nicer screen. We get the webcam back at 16 by 10, having the MUX switch, which I guess goes towards that battery life point. But it is such a refined laptop and the performance results from this all AMD setup are impressive. But there's two things to think about. Firstly, DLSS often can be better or at least is, as I say, more widely supported. And also the price. This top spec model, $2,500 is an awful lot of money. Maybe just the premium you pay for a 14 inch form factor. I mean, the new Razer Blade 14, for example, which comes with a slightly beefier 6900HX processor and a higher end NVIDIA GPU costs almost $3,000. And to be honest, I think if you don't have your heart set on this 14 inch G14, then consider it slightly bigger brother, the G15, which will get you a much better bang for buck in terms of performance. But that is not to say that I don't genuinely love this laptop. It's one of my favorite gaming laptops, or actually just one of my favorite laptops of the year so far. Although I do appreciate we're only in February. But for me, while I haven't tested it yet, I do think the cheaper or maybe even the entry level model of this is gonna be a better option. But what do you reckon? Would you be tempted to buy this? And also, is it a big deal not having an NVIDIA GPU? Are you happy or even excited for an all AMD setup? Let me know in the comments below. And if you did enjoy the video, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. And I will see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.